This is Mitch and welcome to the Real Estate Investor Summit podcast. I'm here with Jack Rosenthal and this guy is very special and very unique and it's my pleasure and my honor to have him on this podcast because this guy is 17 years old and he started business at the age of six. He's out of Armonk, New York, which is uh, uh, in Westchester County and he, I'm going to let him tell you how he started, but it, it's, it's an amazing interview. I wanted to interview this guy for a while. Um, and so we could only do it at this time because he's still in school, guys, and um, has uh, things th that we can't work around. So I decided I would just fit into his schedule. I happen to be at this time that he could do it at my ranch down in uh, Texas, South Texas. And so you'll see my background kind of fade in and out. It's not my normal studio. Uh, but my face is not important on this, just the voice, the questions and his face and his inputs, what's important. So before we start, Jack, how you doing? Hey, I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, that background in the, yeah, in the, uh, in the background you just mentioned is beautiful. I commented on that right before we started. I mean, I think that this is, this background is even better than your podcast studio. So I'm glad that we were able to make this work. And yeah, as you mentioned, sorry, we weren't able to do it earlier in the day. I have school and it would have been a little more difficult to conduct this interview from school, but I'm glad we were able to make it work anyway. Okay. Hey, so I need to take a second here and pay homage to my, um, sponsor for today's podcast. I would like for y'all to reach out and take a look at taxfreefuture.com. If you do not have a tax deferred or tax free self directed retirement plan, then you have no idea the size of the tool you are missing in your tool belt. Um, please go to taxfreefuture.com. Give a little bit of information, please, so that you can get on to the 37 little video vignettes that will show you all the incredible things you can do. It'll also explain to you why your financial advisors are not telling you about these plans and why uh, uh, you should be doing them. And when we tell you the reasons why they're not telling you, uh, you'll understand perfectly. So go to taxfreefuture.com, please, and get those self-direct, take control of your own financial future and learn to invest your own money uh, with what you think is correct. So there you go, taxfreefuture.com. All, All right. right. Uh, let's just start from the beginning. You have this story. Um, you, you started at a very young age. So tell us how you got involved in being an entrepreneur at such a young age. Started my entrepreneurship journey at the age of six years old. I started selling paper airplanes um, basically, basically online. And I was one of the first people to start doing that. The website currently has 60,000 hits as of now, because we were able to get the domain name pool paper planes, which back then was it much easier to get. So nowadays there's still a lot of traffic that comes to that website. Um, but anyway, then continuing at the age of eight years old, I started doing peer to peer loans on sites like prosper and lending club. So the, basically the way that this worked, and I'm sure a lot of the real estate investors out there could appreciate this, maybe if they want to do it with their own children, my dad lent me a thousand dollars that I had to pay him back at a 1% interest rate, just like he was getting in the bank. So it was no different from, you know, whether you lent me the money or the money was staying in the bank. Um, and then I would go relend out these loans on sites like Prosper and Lending Club, which is where you could basically do group fund, uh, group funding of loans. So when someone wanted to borrow $25,000 to remodel their kitchen or whatever the case may be, we would, I would make a $25 loan to that person. And alongside with a thousand other people, we would all make that $25 loan to that person at a thousand, at times a thousand, and then that would fund a $25,000 loan. And then we were paid like, let's say an eight to 9% interest rate on something like that. And then I, as a uh, eight year old investor at the time was able to keep that spread. It worked very successfully at thousand dollars. And then we did it again with $5,000, made even more spread. And that was kind of my first introduction into, into really lending money. Um, at the age of 13 years old, I started what is now considered the largest key investment group in the country, or one of the largest. There's no exact list, so I always call it the largest, but there's no exact list. I started the club uh, my freshman year of high school. I started just kind of recruiting basically a whole bunch of kids from at first the local area, and then we started expanding to the East Coast. Um, the, the idea behind the club was, hey, let's combine, you know, instead of me investing my thousand dollars in the stock market on my own, wouldn't it be so much better if I could invest that thousand dollars alongside 10 other kids and we could all learn from each other, learn from each other's investments, 
uh, and basically kind of talk about stock market investing together. And they also group together all our money in one portfolio. So I started the year, the first year, I think we had 20 members and around $20,000 in the investment account. Uh, fast forward a couple more years after a lot of recruiting, a lot of expansion all across the East Coast, we have close to 100 members and over $115,000 under management in our portfolio for the Young Investors Club, LLC. Um, so that was, that's what I did in freshman year up until senior year. And then last year. So how did that work? How did what work? How did it work out for you? Of the running the Young Ambassadors Club? The way that that sort of worked as a, uh, it wasn't so much of a business venture. It was more of like kind of running, it was like running an organization, right? So like out of that, I wasn't given more of a, fine. I wasn't so much given a financial reward from running that. I was more given hundred other connections with other teenagers that all wanted to invest in the stock market. And I was given a lot of credibility because I was able to put together such a large group and with such a large amount of money for teenagers, which is to my knowledge, never been done before. Um, so it was, so one, it gave me kind of an authority and two, it also gave me a lot of other connections with teenagers who will one day hopefully become future business partners. So, but then again, it gets to the point where you want to know about the money. You want to know about the rewards. When did I start making money? I mean, I, I was, I was 50% expecting you to say it was to get a following or something other than money. I was yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it was, it was because the truth is, you know, running one of those investment clubs, I mean, even if I tried to monetize it, there wouldn't really be a lot of money there in the first place. Uh, you could try and take a management fee, but ultimately that, I feel like that kind of degraded the integrity of the group. Like I, I kind of wanted to be in this just like everyone else and sort of make it an equal. Well, teenagers don't have a ton of money. You know what I mean? That's not where yeah. I would go. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's not where you make the money. You don't make the money off managing other teenagers money. Yeah. So by the way, I started this podcast. Not, I didn't want to make money when I started my podcast. I, I ended up making money from it from, because you kind of morph to, you see the opportunities and then you take advantage of them. So that was, I was kind of figuring that's where you were leading to. So. Got it. Got it. Um, so anyway, finally, now the money part. So, you know, I had realized that although these things that I've achieved up until this point were impressive, you know, I hadn't been financially rewarded for some of my business accomplishments. Other ones I had been, but not kind of the levels that, you know, I really, I really desire to. And although other teenagers weren't really being rewarded financially at the time, they were kind of more focused on school. I was, you know, always very interested in, you know, how can I go out there and make money? So last year, uh, really at the end of junior year, after I'd finished all my major exams for the year, you know, the SAT, very big, important test to take for college, junior grades, very important grades that colleges look at. So kind of at the end of that year, after I was finishing up what was really the end of my school career and what was really going to determine what kind of colleges I got into, after I was done with that, I said, okay, now it's time for me to focus on business and really come up with a vehicle and then execute on that vehicle of a way in which I could produce, you know, income for myself. So I started a social media marketing agency. Um, now I had tried to start a similar one of these around a year or so before with a partner. Um, I'm not sure if you've ever had any experience with partners. However, my experience didn't turn out to be very positive. You know, it was me and a good friend of mine. And that was, that was your first problem. That, that was my, exactly. Don't go into business with my friends, which is something, believe it or not, my dad told me and I did not listen to him anyway. Just like some many kids out there don't listen to me. You can't go to business with your, with your friends, but you need to pick a partner because of their acumen, you know, because of their experience, because, and it's certainly if you're younger, you know, or let's take it a different direction. If, if, if you're great at finding deals, but you don't have money, then your partner should probably be a guy who has a lot of money or has access to money because you need a different piece of the puzzle than what you have, you know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. So that was the biggest thing. You know, the piece of the puzzle that we were providing was not, we weren't, we weren't exactly so different. We were sort of like the same piece of the puzzle. So we didn't provide the same amount of value and we'd had to split it down like the half. Um, which ultimately made it, you know, an unsuccessful partnership. And it also, you know, it's kind of hard to like be friends and then you don't know when you're friends and when you're partners. And it was kind of like, it was all always running and we never had a time to take a break, but for numerous reasons, the business kind of ended up failing because of the partnership, not really because the business was such a bad idea. So a year later, I decided to try the business again. However, this time do it completely on my own, manage everything on my own, get clients on my own, maintain the business on my own, do everything, you know, by myself. Um, and that's really where I started to start, really started to really started to see success. So at the end of 11th grade, uh, I went out to go basically pitch clients 
Now, let me get into what kind of social media marketing, what exactly is social media marketing and what exactly I was pitching. Um, so I'm not sure if you're aware, but you know, recently there's been a whole kind of new industry that's emerged of social media marketing as opposed to traditional marketing. And you know, obviously digital marketing has been around for a little while, but social media is even more recent than that. And basically there's a lot of other young entrepreneurs out there, you know, not much older than me, that are looking to help show businesses how they can use social media to ultimately generate more business and gain more attention on these platforms. Um, so I kind of looked at that and I said, okay, I think that's something I could do. You know, I've been on social media all my life. I understand it. I definitely understand it way better than like a 50 year old business owner who's never been on social media a day in their life. But I said, let me go ahead and give this a try. So I just, uh, my very first client uh, that I got on my own was actually a restaurant. This is, we were basically, I basically pitched the restaurant. I said, Hey, listen, you pay me, you know, whatever it's anywhere from like 500 to 1500 a month. You pay me that much. And I'm going to manage your social media pages. Uh, so the very first one, I started managing it on my own. And then I started getting a couple more. And then I started building out a team to, uh, to help me manage these pages. And then I had to hire a photographer to, to basically go in and take pictures of these different restaurants, of the different food being made. Then I have my content designer kind of execute all the content across the various social media platforms. And then me, the business owner, would kind of manage all the business, keep everything together, get new clients, and make sure that you know, all the deals are working. So I've been doing that up until the, uh, call it, I don't know, May or so of last year, up until now. Uh, I've been running that business and yeah, it's been going quite successfully. So this is kind of the first monetary, the real monetary, like, you know, serious monetary success that I've had in the business world. As I said, I've been an entrepreneur all my life, but this has really been the first thing that, yeah, it's kind of been straight in, in uh, money, money form. So I have a question for you and I'm not trying to steer you one way or the other. I'm just asking a question. Okay? Go ahead. Why are you going to college? We wait for a long pause there. Um, <laughs> it's a very good question. You're not the very first. You're not the first person to ask me, or the second person to ask me that question. So one. This is. I, mean, I, I should have rephrased it, but here, here's the thing. I don't believe college is for everybody, and there's a whole I lot agree. of people that it's definitely not for. And maybe you, you know, whether you go to college or not, this is encouragement to people who either are never going to be able to afford to or, 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 or don't want to, or they're just not cut out for it. I wasn't cut out for it. I didn't go to college. Well, I like to tell everyone I went to La Calle U, um, that's Spanish for the street. I'm, I was educated by the street. I got a doctorate, um, you know, from the school of hard knocks for the street. But um, so, so what's your thoughts still? You didn't finish your thoughts. I cut you off, but what, what's your thoughts? All right. So my thoughts about college. Um, Pretty much one, it would not have been a fine. If it would have been a financial burden, it would have been a different situation for sure. Um, I come from a family which, you know, my parents can afford to pay for college for me, which I know is not like most. So maybe perhaps if I had been in a situation where my parents couldn't afford to pay for my college, I would, um, yeah, I, I might not, I definitely would say that the cost of going to college would be way too high or that I'd be personally responsible for the cost would be way too high a cost to incur. And the second reason why I'm going to college is because, you know, I think that for many people who do okay in school, I don't know exactly how much it makes sense to do okay in school and go to an okay college and then get an okay job. I don't know if the, the reward, if the cost of giving up those four years of your life plus the cost of college, all of that is worth, you know, just getting like an okay job at the end of it. Um, however, I'm not an average student. I mean, I'm not shamed to admit it. I'm a good student. The same kind of disciplines that I'm able to take to the business world, I was also, take, I was also able to take to the school world. Um, you know, it's not, although you're not nearly as passionate about studying for a history test, you know, if you, if you have the willpower to do it, and if you know, if you get a good grade on this test, it's going to impact your grade for the trimester, and that's going to impact your grade for the year, and then you got to do that times five classes, and that'll impact what college you end up to. If you're able to use that to go to a good college, it definitely can be really rewarding in the end. Um, so yeah, I'm in complete agreement with you. I do not think that most Americans should go to college. In fact, I was just talking to my dad the other day, you know, what would my, what would the ideal education world look like? And, you know, we, we, we both kind of agreed that college four years is way too long. The cost of it is way too high. You know, people look up, they come out of college, $200,000 in debt, 
for four years of their business life that they could have spent in the business world, they've given up. So the opportunity cost is very high. Let's say they earned fifty thousand dollars a year at that job. So they haven't just given up two hundred thousand; they give up four hundred thousand dollars. And all the stuff that they would have learned, because let's face it, 90% of the time you learn everything on the job. You don't really learn the skills and acumen that you need to succeed in most businesses in college. So not only you missed out on the education, you missed out on the opportunity cost of earning from job. And not only that, but you paid money to go there. So for all three of those reasons, I don't think it makes sense for the vast majority of Americans. And, you know, just sort of a future idealistic world that I'd like to see is sort of one year college training programs or less where you choose what specific business you want to go into, whether it be real estate or uh, finance or, you know, being a doctor or being a lawyer, whatever the case may be. Go there for one year. You mass learn all the material that you could that they stretch out over four years, but you could probably all learn in one year, and then you go into the business world. You know, at the age of twenty, I that's what I think that the world should kind of evolve to, and I think that we're heading to a point. Uh, you see much less uh, graduation rates in graduate school. You see uh, a lot of talk now online of you know entrepreneurs shouldn't go to college, and I hope that because of how inefficient the system is currently, it'll evolve into a system like that one day. Well, you know, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't known you very long, Jack, but I said, whichever path you take, I'm sure you'll find some great advantages to it. I was just curious to what your, your thoughts were and does your, does your family really want you to go to college or are they leaving it to you? Oh, oh no, they really want me to go. No, no doubt. They, they would, they're not going to do with it, you know, but you know, yeah, I, that definitely has something to do with it. I get it. Um, if, if, if I look back, if I had gone to college, I think I would have studied finance and um, how to read spreadsheets and how to set up um, business because even the entrepreneur, that's one of the hardest things for them to do is learn how to just keep track of their business and keep in good standing and have financial so that when it's time to get bank loans and stuff, you're in order and such that you can get those great, fantastic loans and stuff. Um, because if you're out of order, you know, you can't. So. Um, so you are you just primarily working on the the social media marketing company right now? So I have a couple of things I'm working on. Um, one, I still run the group. However, we're transitioning that. You know, the group was meant for high school students. As next year, I'm going to be I'm a senior, so next year I'm going to be going to college. I'll no longer be a high school student next year. So I'm going to tra I'm transitioning to have someone else manage the club. But as of now, I still currently manage the club. Um, I also maintain my own stock portfolio. You know, all the money that I've earned over the years. I invest in the stock market and, you know, that doesn't take like my daily attention, but I still invest it. Uh, I also, of course, my main daily attention is meant on my social media marketing agency. Just today, I always have fires and, you know, tons of people I'm dealing with, putting out stuff, calling people during school. I mean, during my like one hour break at school, I'm sitting there, you know, working on my business. And, you know, I was just thinking like, man, how, it's, it's really tough running a business while going to school. And, <laughs> Well, you're, do your friends think you're nuts or are you an outcast or are you what, are you like? Yeah, my, my friends, my friends are like, you know, ever since I've been young, they've always known me as the business kid. I was always the kid out there hustling, you know, back in ninth grade, I was selling fidget spinners, putting together websites, selling things online. Ask any one of my old friends, they'll always tell you, yeah, Jack's been an entrepreneur from day one. So they've kind of accepted it at this point. Um, and, you know, like, but I, I, there's no doubt it's been challenging going to school, being an entrepreneur. Fortunately, I will outlive that problem very, very quickly. Uh, but as of the moment, yeah, it's a lot to manage between, you know, going to school, sending emails right, bet right before and between classes, making calls in between classes, getting everything all scheduled and figured out. Um, anyway, so that's the third thing. And then finally, yeah, I just started a YouTube channel, which I'm very excited about. Sort of like your podcast, you took it out. It's kind of like a passion project, similar kind of thing for me, um, you know, whenever you're starting something new, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's sort of fun. I'd say most, that's the best way I'd describe it. You know, you get to experiment, you get to learn. I've already learned so much about YouTube in the last two months um, than, than, than I knew before. Uh, I think currently up to 93 subscribers on YouTube and that's like as of a month and a half of starting the channel. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, putting out YouTube videos, putting out free content for basically other teenagers to try and impact other teenagers and young adults and uh, it's just been so rewarding 
I get comments on the videos like, hey, Jack, I'm another 18-year-old teenager out there. I just got to see one today. I live in New York too. I love what you're doing. I'm also passionate and interested about those things. They've sent me emails. It's super cool to connect with all these people online that I wouldn't otherwise get to connect with in like a world 20 years before without YouTube. Wow. Um, what, what college are you going to go? What college are you going to? I'm going to go to a college called Babson. Okay. Not sure if you're familiar with it. Um, Babson is the number one entrepreneurship college. So they, there's actually somehow there's, re, there's rankings for entrepreneurship colleges and Babson has a very strong program in entrepreneurship. And obviously you could see why I picked that one. So yeah, that's the college that I'm going to next year. Well, that, that makes more sense to me, but I'm not up on colleges, but um, have you ever thought about doing the social media marketing for a company for a piece of it? You mean getting an equity share? Yeah. Uh, I have thought about those things. I, it was offered to me once. Um, I would definitely consider it. And yeah, I would definitely consider it. You might be getting another offer sometime, I predict. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, so what's your advice to young entrepreneurs out there? Uh, so my advice, you know, I get asked this question on every single podcast or whatever the case may be. Um, and also one thing, you know, I'm very transparent about, you know, my strategies. Like, for example, why am I on this podcast today? Some people may be wondering. As much as I love me and you, I mean, it was great to talk to you and everything on this. So, and I'm sure, why do you do podcasts? And have you ever been on podcasts with other people? Probably all the time, right? Um, so why am I doing this podcast today? Well, it's because I know that in order to grow my YouTube channel, in order to grow my social media presence, you got to collaborate with others. So the more people I can collaborate with, the bigger my audiences grow. It'll also, you know, it also brings content to other people's audiences. Obviously, a lot of time you don't get to hear from a 17-year-old entrepreneur. It's a kind of a unique perspective to hear from. But, uh, but yeah, no doubt. So that's the reason I'm on this podcast. And that's just kind of like a little piece of wisdom out there for any kind of entrepreneur that wants to start a, a kind of a following of any kind on Instagram, YouTube, whatever the case may be. You should collaborate with as many people as possible. You know, people, and, and by the way, maybe you think this way as well, and you have to think this way in order to take on as many houses as you did. You said you've, you own indirectly or directly like a thousand plus houses. That means you're thinking at a different level than most people. You just are. I mean, you may not be aware of it or and other people don't understand exactly the level that you're thinking at, but in order to take on a thousand houses, that means you've probably made 20,000 offers. You've probably sent over a hundred thousand emails. You've made thousands and thousands of phone calls and other people just, they don't understand exactly what goes into taking on that much of a business and creating that much of a business, whatever kind of results they see, there's like 10 times that much of action that was put out into the world. And, um, you know, I'm sure you remember it back then, but I'm sure a lot of the audience isn't exactly familiar with how much kind of effort it takes. And just to give you an idea, I know go back to like the interviews, why am I on this podcast today? Uh, or how did I get this podcast today? Well, I'll give you, I'll tell you literally exactly how I had my, one of my VAs an assistant of my virtual assistant. I said, okay, make a list of the top thousand, uh, financial YouTube channels that I can collaborate with and we'll send emails to all of them. And that's exactly what we did. Other people would say, I'm going to message 10 guys. I'm going to go research, find 10 guys that I want to message to. And I'm going to, you know, try and reach out to those people and see what happens. Yeah. If you do that, you might be lucky to get one or maybe you'll get nothing. However, you know, entrepreneurs think at bigger levels. They think, okay, why, why would you go for 10 when you could go for a thousand? And yeah, obviously I can't sit there and do all the manual labor of typing out all the yields and everything, but I can pay someone else. My business is fortunate enough where I have a business that I can afford to outsource stuff to other people. And uh, yeah, that, that would be my, that would be my first tip. You got to think at a different level. You have to, whether you're trying to pick up social media marketing clients, whether you're trying to pick up, you know, real estate investment properties and you're trying to make wholesale deals, However much, however much you want to get out of it, you got to do 10 times or a hundred times more action than you think is required in order to actually end up with those end results. So, I mean, that's a very, it's a very uh, easy concept to understand, but very few people execute on it. And that'd be my biggest advice to really any entrepreneurs out there. If they really want to get, um, if they really want to get success at a young or, or late age. Yeah. So, um, you know, I had, when I, when I was told I was going to interview, a, I was told I was going to interview a 16 year old. Of course you got old on me. You turned 17. So, but, but, um, <laughs> you know, I had my preconception of like who I was going to be talking to. I knew that you would be 
um, exceptional or, 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 or different, but I really had no idea that you would be to the level that you're at. You're, you're very, if you don't mind me saying, you're very impressive if you ask me. And, uh, you know, when I was not even six, when I was 21, I had my head so far up my, you know what, I, I, I mean, I shudder to think, um, so where did, where, like, did you just come up with this stuff on your own or do you come from an entrepreneurial family that helped guide you this direction? Because I, my family was not entrepreneurial. We didn't talk about business at the, the table. There might not even been any business to really talk about. And, and I'm just curious, did, is, are you spawning this or did someone help spawn this? With so you? I think that, I think that, um, 99 out of 100 kids, if they're born to the exact same family, the exact same conditions, they would not become entrepreneurs like me. I have a little brother. He's interested in playing football. All he wants to do is play as much football as possible. He couldn't give less of a, you know what, about entrepreneurship than, than any other kid out there. Um, so I would not say it was so much unique to my family. Now, my dad, it just so happens that my dad did start his own business. It's a financial company. But it's kind of financial is a little difficult to come of a concept for a kind of a kid to understand. You can't exactly go visit a factory or anything in finance. It's kind of starting your own finance business and working in a finance company are not so far. They're kind of more closely related than like other businesses. Whereas working in a shoe factory and owning a shoe factory, there's a huge difference between the employee and business owner working in finance and owning a finance business. There's not as much of a difference. So that's why I say it's not so related to my background. Now I was fortunate that, me as a person and my dad as an entrepreneur, I was able to balance a lot of stuff off of him and say, Hey, uh, you know, I'm thinking about doing this or whatever the case would be. But yeah, ultimately I think I was just born with it. Uh, I don't think there's any kind of like thing that I saw at a young age that kind of inspired me to go into this. As I said, I have a little brother and I'm sure if I had other family members, they wouldn't be interested in it at all. It was just kind of something that was in me from since this is as early as I can remember. I mean, what person creates a, you know, thinks to start making money at the age of six years old, unless it's born, unless it's born into their blood. So that's, yeah, that's sort of how I think about it. Um, you know, I met other, I, unlike you, because you're not, you know, in the entrepreneurship world, so you don't really see a lot of the younger entrepreneurs. I met some of the few younger entrepreneurs that are out there, which, you know, thanks to social media, I would have never been able to be meet 20 years ago, but I was just meeting, uh, just talking virtually like through Zoom to a kid in England. And, you know, he's the exact same thing. 17 year old entrepreneur, runs a marketing company, you know, doing well in the marketing company. And, you know, me and him just had such a similar story. We were totally different situations on different sides of the world, but like kind of our, our be we were sort of born into the world the same way. Um, so yeah, I think that, you know, entrepreneurship doesn't, entrepreneurship a lot of the times the greatest ones are born with it. Do you think entrepreneurship can be learned? It's a very difficult question. It's a very difficult question to answer because the practices, yes, what I do on a daily basis could be learned, like how to answer emails, how to, you know, talk to people, whatever the case may be, how to, how to do marketing, all that stuff could be learned, but sort of the spirit that takes you forward, the thing that thinks you, Hey, the thing that makes you think differently, that makes you think in a creative way, that makes you think differently than other people, that you can't just follow a script all the time. You know, average people are very good at following scripts. Entrepreneurs make the scripts. They write the sales scripts, like when the guy's on the phone and there's the 100 guys in the room that are calling up on the phone with that script, but the entrepreneur is the one who writes that script. And I think that, you know, it's, I don't want to put anyone's dreams out of the way, but I think that you are born being an entrepreneur. Um, yeah, you may not realize it as early as an age as I did, but I think that most people that are entrepreneurs were sort of born to be entrepreneurs. Yeah. I, I think you're, I think you're describing passion, you know, like you have a passion for it for whatever reason, you know, for whatever reason, you know, I have a passion besides, you know, an investment passion. I like to write songs. I have no re I know I have no rhyme or reason of why I want to do it. I, I've done it for 40 years. I don't know why I keep going. I don't even make money writing songs, you know, particularly because it's, compared to the what I do it's not it's not worth diverting my attention from you have a book out called the ultimate guide to teenage investing uh, when did yeah. you write the book sure so I wrote the book uh, I want to call it a month ago at this point yeah it's been a little over a month or so since I've had the book out um, so yeah the book is called the ultimate guide to teenage investing it's in my opinion the number one teenage investing book 
Uh, it's on. It's currently for sale on Amazon. Uh, we're trying to get it at some of the local bookstores as well, but currently on Amazon, you can basically, it is basically a guide that I've written. That's why, hence the ultimate team investing guide for any young, any young investors out there from, I'd say anywhere ages, really like 10 to 21. So big age group of people that are young, but they're looking to start investing. Um, you know, I've kind of, I've dealt with many, many, probably over a hundred teenage investors, either through running the club or through um, YouTube and social media followings. So I've really had a lot of experience in kind of teaching kids how to invest in the stock market, how to get them interested about it, how to get them passionate about it, where to invest their money. And in the book, I walk through exactly how I make my stock investment decisions. So when I'm looking, you know, everything from the top of like what kind of stock screener I'm gonna, like where I'm gonna look for all the stocks and then what kind of different metrics I'm gonna use to decipher which stocks I'm gonna actually make investments in and which ones I'm not going to. And just basically I, in the book, I just, I only know what works for me. So I write in the book, hey, here's what worked for me. Here's how I was able to build my portfolio. Here's how we were able to get good returns in the Young Investors Club, as well as my own portfolio. And uh, you know, here's the same methods that you can use, which if they worked for me over these last five years, there's a good chance to work over the next five, 10, 15 years for young investors. So yeah, that's basically what, that's basically what I talk about in the book. Um, and yeah, I wrote, I wrote it in about a month. What are your average returns? So the average returns for the Young Investors Club, I believe in the last year, we had a 15% return for the Young Investors Club. Very good year. Obviously, the stock market was up a lot, so that helped. I mean, honest about it. But nevertheless, a 15% return. And then in my own investment portfolio, I think something around like a 12% return. So good returns in both. Steady, steady. Um, I want everyone to go to reinvestorsummit.com forward slash Young Jack. Uh, you like my... my I tag there, young Jack, um, get over there. Um, he's probably gonna be having things come out as we go. I've explained to Jack that the show notes are evergreen. If he ever has some other stuff come up or offering or if he's speaking or anything to go ahead and put it in there. But right now we'll get you some links to uh, the things that he's into and his contact information. Maybe you wanna interview him yourself for a podcast. So if you're some podcasters out there, you'll have his contact information out there to talk to him. I like to promote this guy. Uh, as much as I could. So go to reinvestorsummit.com forward slash young Jack. And uh, Jack, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to come on. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. Oh, sorry, did you break up there again? No, we're good. Okay, sounds good. Sometimes it's hard for me to tell with you, Jay. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. It was a pleasure to meet you. I look forward to talking a little more afterwards about your real estate career. Um, and yeah, so all the real estate investors, and young investors, old investors out there. Um, I would just say, you know, I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to really entering the business world. As I said, I haven't really had the time to start entering the business world till the end of last year. And I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to 2020 and, you know, just so much opportunity out there. The one last piece of advice that I guess I'd give to, to all, I guess I'll speak to my own, it's the teen entrepreneurs out there is you guys got to start young. You guys got to find something you're passionate about. You know, whatever, if it's business, great, find something, some kind of business vehicle you're passionate about, whether it be marketing or investing or, I don't know, lawn mowing. There's tons of different businesses that kids could do out there. Find something you're passionate about, save the money, don't spend it, save the money and invest it and to build a, uh, build a very long-term portfolio that will, you know, you'll benefit from for many, many years. And uh, the last thing I'd say is like, I know it's all in the show notes and everything, but the best ways to find me is my, my YouTube channel, which ironically, it's actually under my name, Jimmy Duke, which is because my parents won't let me put my real name online until I turn 18. So that's, that's the, uh, I just want to address that little discrepancy there, but that's the best ways to find me online. Well, um, that's a, well, I, that brings me to a question. So how are you able to do this stuff under age? Do you, did you have a corporation yeah, good question. Uh, so the, the social media marketing is done through sole proprietorship. Uh, yeah, no LLC created yet. However, one of my clients just the other day is recommending that I get an LLC for legal protection. So I'm definitely looking into that currently. Um, as far as investing, it's done through a custodial account. So my grandfather set up the custodial account for me. As I said, my dad's in finance. So there's a lot of laws and regulations if he sets it up uh, under his name. So that's what my grandfather does it under his name. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how the legality structure works. Yeah, there's, there, there are ways to do business if you're underage. You just got to talk to people that know how to do it and do it legally and do it right up front and on board. But uh, 
Man, it's my pleasure to talk to you. Uh, I appreciate you being on. Uh, I do want to talk to you more. So um, you guys go over to reinvestorsummit.com forward slash young jack. We'll repost all this stuff. So if you didn't get it or didn't write it down, don't worry about it. We'll have the YouTube channel over there. We'll have everything over there. So thank you very much, Jack, for taking the time. You've been a pleasure to talk to you. My hat is off to you. Literally, my hat is off to you because I'm at the ranch right now. And uh, we're going to go out and hunt down some hogs or some pigs here in a minute. Uh, yeah. don't and um, <laughs> all right, you guys, this is Mitch Steven with the Real Estate Investor Summit podcast. Uh, I'd like to thank TaxFreeFuture.com for sponsoring this episode. Please go to TaxFreeFuture.com and find out what your financial advisors are not telling you and why they're not telling you. And we'll give you our opinion on it. You can make your own decision, but it's pretty crystal clear. Take control of your financial future. Um, we all got to trust some people and get some advice somewhere, but at the end of the day, take that, 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 that bull by the horns and, and, and be a bigger piece of your destiny, please. All right. Uh, thank you for stopping by to get you some Jack Rosenthal and uh, we'll see you next episode. Bye now.